Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome to a very special day here on the campus of West Virginia University, the 2019 Hall of Fame induction ceremony. And uh, on behalf of the athletic department and everyone involved with West Virginia University, we sincerely welcome you and thank you for being with us here as we honor this fantastic class. The Hall of Fame's first induction took place in 1991, which makes this year's ceremony the 29th in school history. Since that time, nearly 200 Mountaineers have been enshrined, and today we will formally welcome nine amazing WVU standouts to this very special group. Before we begin the induction, would you please join me in welcoming West Virginia University Athletic Director Shane Lyons. Thank you, Tony, and welcome everyone to the induction ceremony of the 29th class of the WVU Sports Hall of Fame. It's uh, always a great day to welcome these great Mountaineers back on campus and rightfully honor them as they take their place in the Hall of Fame. And I always look forward, this is a special day, not only for them, but it's a special day for us as an athletic department from the rich tradition and history that these individuals have provided our program. So it's uh, truly look forward to this each and every year. Today's inductees made great contributions to the legacy of the WVU athletics. And I want to thank them for their dedication and their pride and passion to the Golden Blue. They will always be part of our rich history and will always be part of the Mountaineer family. You will see and hear as they are being inducted of their accomplishments in the upcoming videos and tributes, but let me say that the collegiate experience is something that an athlete never forgets, and these nine inductees have all reached their pinnacle of their sport. I do want to mention three pieces of history being made here today in the WVU Sports Hall of Fame. In wrestling, we have two brothers joining at the same time, both Virtus and Greg, uh, are honored for wrestling excellence that they left behind, so that is the first. Then we also have the first family of Mountaineer Athletics, the Bulger family. Places its third member in the WVU Sports Hall of Fame as Meg joins her brother, Mark and Kate, uh, uh, in, in the Hall of Fame. It's pretty neat that their parents, Jim and Patricia, entrusted all three to WVU Athletics, and all three turned out to be Hall of Fame careers for the Mountaineers. Jim and Patricia, we look forward to the grandchildren and uh, recruiting them as they move forward. And finally, how cool is it that John Thunder Thornton goes into the Hall of Fame on the same day when his son Jalen takes the field uh, as a Mountaineer freshman at the same stadium where his father earned All-American status. So these are all great stories that help make college athletics so special. Before we get to the ceremony, I want to give special thanks to all the members of the selection committee who shared their time to make this celebration a reality. With more than 250 former student athletes, the committee uh, has a very tough job and goes through piles and piles of, of nominations each year to, to narrow it down to the 9, 10, 11 members that's inducted each year. And I want to thank them for their time and their valuable uh, and their appreciation for their service to WVU Sports Hall of Fame. So would the committee members in, in the audience please stand and be recognized, please. I know some of you here. Tony's behind me. Tony is part of that. Kathy Martin on my staff as well, so thank you for, for the job that you do. I'd also like to recognize past members of the Hall of Fame who are in attendance here today and welcome them back to campus and again for all you do for WVU athletics. Past and or current Hall of Fame members in the audience, would you all please stand to be recognized? Some's in the back there, Coach. In closing, congratulations to these honorees and their families. I'm thrilled to have you all back on campus and where you truly left your mark. Today, you rightfully take your place in the WVU Sports Hall of Fame. And thank you all for coming here today. And let's go, Mountaineers. Thank you, Shane. Our first inductee becomes just the third member ever from the West Virginia University women's soccer team to be enshrined, and the previous two inductees just happen to be her teammates. Would you please direct your attention to the video boards as we meet Lisa Stoya. 
a dynamic performer in the midfield from 2000 to 2003, Lisa Stoya earned Big East Midfielder of the Year honors in 2002 for her efforts in leading West Virginia to its first regular season championship. Stoya was an NSCAA, Adidas, and Soccer Buzz second team All-American in 2002 as a junior. Stoya continued her domination in her senior season, breaking the season assist record of 12 she tied the season before on her way to becoming West Virginia's all-time assist leader with 33 career dishes. She became the first midfielder in Big East history to earn Midfielder of the Year honors in consecutive seasons by winning the award for the second time in 2003. For her efforts in 2003, Stoya earned first team All-America honors from Soccer Buzz and the NSCAA. Stoya played three seasons of professional soccer, one with the St. Louis Athletica of the WPS and two with the Boston Renegades in the Women's United Soccer League. Stoya returned to her college alma mater in 2007 as a full-time member of coach Nikki Izzo Brown's staff. She serves as the Mountaineer Senior Associate Head Coach and has helped solidify WVU's position as a perennial top 10 team. With Stoya's assistance, the Mountaineers have made 12 consecutive trips to the NCAA tournament, including three quarterfinal appearances and the program's first ever NCAA College Cup Final in 2016. Please join us in a round of applause for 2019 inductee Lisa Stoya. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the West Virginia University Sports Hall of Fame, Lisa Stoya. Thank, thank you, ladies. Uh, thank you. Um, wow, it's crazy. So I would like to start off by first thanking Shane, obviously Lyons, um, West Virginia University, and the Hall of Fame Committee. I really appreciate this honor. It's an incredible recognition and one that I'm very, very proud of and um, I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Um, to the 2019 class inductees, some that I've actually had the honor of being in school at the same time, so congrats to all of you guys. It's a pleasure to be going into the Hall of Fame with you guys, so congrats to you. Um, being inducted into the Hall of Fame is an incredible recognition, but not something achieved all on my own. It's a time to celebrate, but mostly a chance to thank many special people here today that have impacted my career and without them this wouldn't have been possible. It's kind of, I got a quick little story and I don't, I don't quite know if the Hall of Fame would actually have inducted me had they known that when I committed to West Virginia, being from Long Island, I wasn't quite sure I, that West Virginia was a separate state because I thought it was the western part of Virginia. So I apologize, but I've now learned to grow that I'm definitely part of the blue and gold. Nikki, that's a true story, you know it. Um, so. I now know where West Virginia is and one that I definitely call home now, so, um, so thank you. But hopefully I don't lose my induction had, having not known that. Um, to my family, mom and dad, you both are the true role models of life. You have given me the foundation of who I am today and define what hard work is. This honor reflects you both and for all you sacrifice to keep my dreams going. The unconditional love and support you have given and continue to give, I am beyond thankful for. I love you guys. To my brothers, Kaz and Richie, you both kept me honest in my abil abilities by never making it easy, that's for sure. You taught me how to compete and to be strong in everything I, di I did. Tears were never going to win because mom made that a point that if I was to play with the boys, you don't go in crying. So thank you for making me strong. Um, thank you for making me a fighter. And um, obviously you both were always had my back no matter what. So thanks for being the best protective brothers and what brothers do best in spoiling their little sisters. So thank you. Mal, uh, my sister-in-law is here, Mal, Max, Jack, Zane, Cosmo, so thankful you guys can be here to celebrate and I look forward to being part of your future successes. And my little nephew, Cos, my godchild, I will be very honest with you, as much as he loves his aunt, he was much, Greg Jones is much cooler than I am since he's a wrestler, so Greg, he's really actually here for you. Um, to my Uncle Artie and Aunt Kathy, it only took a few games and eventually it led to you both um, never missing one of my games my senior year. So I'm thankful for the sacrifices you made in supporting me. Having you guys on the sidelines to celebrate these special collegiate moments has meant the world to me, so thank you. <sighs> Sorry. That I said I was not gonna get emotional, but one person who couldn't be here. <sighs> Sorry. Was my grandfather who I was, he was my biggest fan.
and he never missed anything, and I was an angel in his eyes, but now he's truly one of mine, so I'm thankful for his support. Sorry. I said I wasn't going to cry. All right, Parsons, my second family. Thank you for opening your home to me a few years ago. This is Mike, Julie, Kendra, Caitlin, and Ryan. You guys opened your homes to me a few years ago, and everyone this weekend, I couldn't thank you for that enough. The best part of our time is we have become family, and that's something that can't be broken. Your endless support has meant so much. Kendra, who's your favorite sister? You're my favorite little sister. Caitlin, you're a very close second, but I love you guys all. To my teammates, Abbott, Finley, Minnick, Mo, Marissa, Leah, without each of you, this wouldn't be possible. You have all had a certain impact in my career, and knowing you could all be here today means the world to me, which I'm incredibly thankful for. Abs, I'm honored to be joining an awesome teammate in the Hall of Fame. And although our schedule didn't allow us to be here to support you, I'm sure glad that you are here supporting me. So thank you. That means a lot to me. To my friends that are here and parents that have traveled here, um, I'm very thankful for your time in celebrating this honor. That means a lot to me as well. To the coaches, Garzon, thank you for all you have done to me and what you continue to do in support of this program. Your pride and loyalty for this program is something I've always admired, and that never goes unnoticed, so thank you. Duper, Duper, you are my favorite coach. I'm okay, Nikki hears that. She knows it. It's, on, it's, it's the truth. Okay, so thank you for being the glue to this program. Your positive energy was incredible and had a major impact on me as a player. Thank you for believing in me and always being an inspiration. You are an incredible person and someone I can still count on, so no one can replace the mark that you left here. And, the, and on the program, and so thanks for being you and what you have done for me. Nikki, this honor is a direct reflection of you. You are a true mentor and a life coach. In my eyes, it won't be long before you're up here, and we all know that. You believed in me as a player and gave me the opportunity to come and impact your program, but it would be perfect end to know that it was you who actually impacted me. In fact, so much you're stuck with me now, because I haven't left, obviously. And the reason why I got into college coaching. So as a coach, your inspiration and motivation was someone you wanted to go out there to work hard for. Sorry. To win for or go down fighting for. Thank you for believing in me then and still today. You're, you're truly the best at what you do, and I'm so thankful I chose to play for you and I chose West Virginia. Thank you. Let's go Mountaineers. Thank you, Lisa, and congratulations. No sport at West Virginia University has won more national titles than the rifle program. This morning, we enshrine into the Hall of Fame a mountaineer who created a new standard in collegiate competition by his performance. Direct your attention, please, to the video boards as we meet Dr. Stefan Tynell. Dr. Stefan Tynell was the first six-time All-American in school history and the first shooter to earn two All-America honors in the same season during his career from 1976 to 1980. A native of Sweden, Tynell established a new standard for collegiate competition for the small bore full course competition in 1979 with an 1178 out of a possible 1200. He topped that mark with an 1181, the highest score in the history of small bore match in January 1980. Tynell broke that record with an 1187 at the NCAA Rifle Championships in April 1980. He also held the NCAA mark for the top small bore score in the standing position in team competition. Tynell earned All-America honors in 1977 and 1978 before capturing All-America honors in air rifle and small bore in both 1979 and 1980. He is the only shooter in school history to be named the team's most outstanding shooter all four years. At the end of his collegiate career, Tynell was called the nation's all-time top collegiate shooter by coach Ed Etzel. In 2007, he became a member of the Academy of Distinguished Alumni for Mechanical Engineering at WVU. 
Please join us in a round of applause for 2019 inductee, Stefan Tynell. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the West Virginia University Sports Hall of Fame, Dr. Stefan Tynell. Uh, Director Lyons, thank you very much. Uh, fellow inductees, uh, thank you very much. And, and uh, great honor to be here. Uh, it is something that I did not expect, but uh, I was trying to follow the shoes of my, my coach, Ed Essel, uh, who, uh, who recruited me to, to Penn State in, in, or to uh, West Virginia in, in 1976. And so uh, uh, my career has taken me to many different places, and so my education is, is what I would like to address here uh, for a few seconds. So now I'm at Penn State as a, as a professor of mechanical engineering, and it actually began here at West Virginia. So for those of you who, uh, who think about putting your kids here, uh, it is an excellent program, and I would tend to think that it is, is better than what we have at Penn State, because it is focusing deeper on the fundamental aspects. So I'm, I'm very uh, appreciative of, of having been here, getting educated, and so that's, that's what I've really taken away from the four years that I spent here. I'm also very, very thankful f uh, to the athletic department for the scholarship that I received. And uh, uh, because that what what changed my life. Because in 1976, I had opportunities to study in, in Sweden uh, or study here. And, and when I'm studying here, I had opportunity to, to mix both education and uh, and uh, being an athlete in Sweden, that was not really possible. So for that, I'm, I'm very, very thankful, and I will never, ever forget the four years uh, that I spent here, and I will never, ever forget West Virginia. So let's go Mountaineers today. Thank you. Congratulations, Dr. Tynell. Our next inductee comes from men's basketball. Pete White is a homegrown mountaineer from Clendenin, who was part of West Virginia's golden era during the 1950s. Let's now meet Pete White. Pete White was a standout men's basketball player from 1952 to 1955, playing for coaches Red Brown and Fred Schaus, alongside the likes of All-Americans Mark Workman and Hot Rod Huntley. White, a native of Clendenin, West Virginia, served as captain of the 1954-55 basketball team and first NCAA tournament team at WVU. He played in 70 varsity games, scoring 746 points and grabbing 561 rebounds. As a senior, White averaged 15.8 points and 12 rebounds one of 10 Mountaineers to average a double-double for a season. He declined an invitation to join the NBA St. Louis Hawks to fulfill the ROTC commitment in the United States Air Force. He served 42 years on the WVU Foundation board and received WVU's Order of Vandalia in 2001. White received a bachelor's degree in business administration and a master's degree from WVU, and was commissioned as a first lieutenant in the United States Air Force. Please join us in a round of applause for 2019 inductee, Pete White. Accepting on behalf of Pete, would you please give a warm welcome to his son, Brad White. Thank you all very much, and uh, on behalf of my father and family, I'm honored to be here. We congratulate all of our fellow inductees, and my dad is deeply humbled to be in this esteemed class, because they all shared something in the way they wore the blue and gold. And I want to thank the committee, the athletic department, Shane, Brian, Kathy, and of course, President Gee. We thank family and friends, especially Doug Van Scoy who is dad's first protege in the financial industry and shares dad's immeasurable love for the university. 
He is a finance, he is a lion of a person and has a huge heart and is a big, big reason why dad is honored today. I have the unique opportunity to talk and brag about my dad and go beyond the stats and the bio and add a little bit of texture into what was truly and is a great mountaineer. Dad was recruited across the United States, all the way from Coach Adolf Rupp at Kentucky through to Princeton University. And then there was Tennessee, where on his recruiting trip, Dad's two hosts were football players out on bail for manslaughter. As a Vanderbilt grad, I can understand Dad's decision not to consider Tennessee. After, after all the offers, Dad said, clearly, there is no question. I am a West Virginian, and that's where I'm going. And so he did, and he thrived. And he was a captain for a first year, 20-something Fred Schaus. I think that's lost on a lot of people. I mean, how young? I mean, Fred was young. Fred said, uh, Pete, um, we got this young buck in uh, Hot Rod Hunley. Um, I need you to help manage him. And there, as you know, there are stories there, and I'm stopping at that point. As captain, Dad led WVU to its, the first NCAA tournament in the beginning of the golden era, as Tony referenced. Now, there are all these different statistics, double-doubles, and everything else, but one stat that was not captured was that his no he had his nose broken three times in nine days. In his senior year, Dad averaged a double-double in every game, but his best was when he dropped 29 and 27 on Pitt. Every gen January 29th on his statewide show, Tony says, on this night in 1955, Pete White took it to Pitt with 29 and 27. So that is when one of those evenings, I kind of got Dad and said, Tony's on tonight, you know, seriously. Like, so we listened. Tony made his annual remarks, and Dad, in his humble way, just smiled and said, yeah, it was pretty special. His nose still doesn't look right. <laughs> so passing up you know, on the opportunity to play pro ball, Dad joined the Air Force and crewed up as an electronic countermeasures officer on one of the first eight B-52s to roll off the assembly line during the Cold War. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Dr. Strangelove, but that's the life that my father lived, circling the Arctic, waiting for the call. He is a devout patriot. Dad's commitment to West Virginia didn't end after hoops. He was the longest serving board member on the foundation, and his efforts were awarded with the highest honor at the university, the Order of Vandalia. And I'll make this note as I'm still bragging. Uh, Dad is one of only six mountaineers to be in both Vandalia and in the Hall of Fame. I will close with what I think sums up Dad's hard work, positive outlook on West Virginia and life. When he was recruiting me to leave the Pentagon, return to West Virginia, and join him in the financial business, he said, he was kind of this unintentional Zen dude. I mean, I, you know, he wasn't like real Asian, but he was Zen. And he said, you know, Brad, some people look at life and ask, is the cup half empty or half full? And then he looked at me and he said, no, Brad, the real question is, who owns the cup? Thank you very much. Thank you, Brad, and congratulations. Like Pete White, our next inductee is also a West Virginia native. Steve Dunlap's Mountaineer career began as a player before becoming a part of a Mountaineer coaching staff that reached heights never seen before. Please direct your attention to the boards now as we meet Steve Dunlap. Steve Dunlap lettered three years as a linebacker from 1973 to 1975, playing for coach Bobby Bowden. He helped lead the Mountaineers to a 19-15 record, including a 9-3 mark in 1975 and a 13-10 win over NC State in the Peach Bowl. 
The native of Hurricane West, Virginia, Dunlap compiled 359 total tackles, a school record at the time, including 182 solo stops, three interceptions, and one tackle for loss. As a senior in 1975, he was the second leading WVU tackler with 155 stops. Following his playing days, Dunlap embarked on a 35-year coaching career. He coached in 21 bowl games, including 18 at West Virginia, which included two national championship games, the 1989 Fiesta Bowl and the 1993 Sugar Bowl. The Mountaineer defense took top national honors in 1996, and Dunlap was honored for his coaching ability in 1996 when he was named a finalist for the inaugural Frank Broyles Award awarded annually to the nation's top assistant coach. Dunlap coached 13 professional players, two All-Americans and 30 All-Conference players. Please join us in a round of applause for 2019 inductee, Steve Dunlap. Please welcome to the West Virginia University Sports Hall of Fame, Steve Dunlap. Thank you, Tony. They, they can make anybody look good on video, right? No question. Anyway, I want to thank the committee for giving me the chance to be an opportunity to be in the Hall of Fame. It's just a great honor. I never thought it would happen. All those years of walking up and down the hallway, seeing all those plaques on those tripods, and I always, in the back of your mind, I said, what if I could ever live up to that? So today's the day, and I'm very humbled by it. Also, I wanted to congratulate all the new 2019 members. It's a great class. I don't know why I'm in it, but here I am. It's a tremendous class. You know, it's, it's a funny thing about football. It, you know, it is the ultimate team sport. And when this happened, I had a flood of memories over the last 34 years of playing and coaching here. And, and it, just, it just, it goes so fast that you don't really recollect what happened until somebody does something like this to you and you start thinking about all the things that happened. So, Tony, be patient with me, okay, Shane? Because uh, 34 years, there's a lot of stories to tell. I'm going to talk a little bit about the team behind the team. No coach is successful unless he has a great support team. My support team is my wife, Wendy, my wife, Wendy, and my children, uh, Matt and Megan. Wendy did it all for us, no question. You don't understand what a coach's wife goes through. We're, we're pretty much gone for six months a year. We come in and at night at 10 o'clock and say hi to the kids and they go to bed and at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock in the morning, we're gone again. So for about six months, she pays the bills. She raises our kids, well done, I might add, and just did a tremendous job. And, and I just could never do it without you. It never would have happened. So thank you, Wendy. Matt and Megan survived two or three different school changes and. I think it made them stronger, made them better people. Uh, they also had to listen how dumb his dad was when we lost a game at school, I'm sure of that. So thank you, had great kids, I'm very proud of them. Uh, oh. Then my mother-in-law and father-in-law, great support, Don and Martha McCune. Really appreciate all you've done for us all the years. You've always been there for us and I wanna thank you for that. And if I had one wish right today, one wish, I wish my late parents, June and Kyle Dunlap, were here to see us today. They were huge Mountaineer fans. They were here to almost every game. They loved the Mountaineers. And they, for me and my sister, Colleen, they were great role models. They taught us many life lessons, but the biggest life lesson they taught us is basically is toughness, hard work, and dedication, and, de and more than anything, determination. There, there's no doubt that Without them, I would have been nothing. So I give all the praise to my mom and dad. They were wonderful. <clears throat> as far as being a player, and I know my ex-teammates are here somewhere, so I don't want to hear anything, okay? But anyway, the first thing I thought about when this happened 47 years ago when I was driving up here from Hurricane, West Virginia, a little farm boy, in August of 1972, in my drop-top Oldsmobile with my roommate, Jack Eastwood, wondering what's going to happen. Well, back then, the recruited numbers, there were 42 in our class. 
And I walked in here, and I told everybody I was a linebacker, and they looked at me and laughed because I was 5 foot 11 and all of a strap 188 pounds. That is not exactly what you're looking for in a linebacker. I was tiny to say the least. But I was a little intimidated, but I was sure of one thing. They weren't going to run me off. I'm going to be here to the end. <clears throat> Funny story about Coach Bowden when they recruited. We, back then, I'd never been to a college game until I got recruited. I got recruited. I came up to the game. On Sunday morning, Coach Nealon brought my parents and, and me and my sister into the, his office, offered me a scholarship. And I said, that's nice. We got in the car and drove home. On the way home, my dad said, didn't he offer you the scholarship? And I said, well, I guess he did. Though. And hell, why didn't you take it? So we had to call him either on the road. I can't remember. On the road to make sure that he wouldn't give my scholarship away or wait till we go home. We had to call Coach Nealon back. It was just totally crazy. A little bit about the 74 team. Very talented team. Everybody wonders, like, how did Steve make all those tackles? Well, we lost our quarterback early in the season. We had a whole bunch of injuries, right, Bubba? And all got a guys hurt, and, and, and defense had to play a lot of defense. So everybody said, well, how do you get so many tackles in the Boston College game, those 28 tackles, oh, hell, it's only half of them. They ran the ball 55 times. Somebody had to make them. Now, if you ask my teammates how I made all those tackles, all those guys up front, Andy and Gary Lombard and all those guys, you know what they told me, don't you? Well, we eat up all the blocks so you could run free and make all the tackles and you'd be the hero. And it's a little bit right. I agree with them. Last but not least, the award system had 1974. It's just, it was just unbelievable you got a bunch of stars stuck on your helmet we wasn't very fancy back then so if you get enough stars the last thing you could get was gold shoes that was a pinnacle of, of all the awards they had so you had enough points you would get gold shoes so they put it in the paper and advertised it to, to look for the, the player with the gold shoes which luckily enough was me well i think going in the locker room for the game i was thinking well i can't wait to see these shoes are probably like the pittsburgh steelers gold leather shoes right so we didn't have a lot of money back then. So I walked up to my, my locker and I look in there and my white shoes were there painted with gold helmet paint. <laughs> Laces and all, beautiful. So when I started to walk around the locker room, I left a trail of sparkles. And of course, you know what happened when I got out on the, on the field. The other team knew all about it. That whole offensive line wanted to kill me with the guy with the gold shoes on. And that happened to be me. And anyway, by halftime, all the paint fell off anyway and it didn't make any difference. As far as the 75 team, we're very proud of that. We went 9-3. and three. Uh, Had 32 seniors that stuck together, weren't near as talented, but a bunch of tough, hard-working guys that wanted to get it done. And, and we, won, we won nine games, which was absolutely sensational. Uh, probably the highlight of it all, we beat Pitt with Bill McKenzie field goal. Anybody ever, ever forgets that? I'll, no way. No way. We also beat a Lou Holtz coach. NC State game. You know, he's supposed to be a great coach. Well, we beat him, okay? We beat him pretty good, too. So anyway, and everybody says, well, that's just a peach bowl. What's the big deal? Well, you know how many, take, take a guess how many bowl games there were in 1975. There's not 36 like there is now. There were 11. So it was a big deal to go to the peach bowl. As far as the coaching aspect, I, I really never thought I was going to be a coach. I, I just kind of fell into it, and basically Donnie Young offered me a, a graduate assistant job. I said, well, he sent me grad school, might as well. But anyway, I, I wanted to thank all the great players, guys like John Thunder Thornton. They made me really, really smart. And I was lucky enough to get to coach them. And I felt really privileged and blessed to let that happen. And as a coach, you only know you're as good as your players. And, and that's always going to be true, and that's true today. And, and it, all I know, and it's, all coaches say this, when you have good players, you're a genius. And when you're not so good players, you're an idiot, and it's always going to be that way. I've <clears throat> been around some uh, great coaches, head coaches, Hall of Fame coaches. Every one of these guys I'm going to talk about influenced me in some way or, or manner, and either in the West Virginia Hall of Fame or the National Coaches Hall of Fame. So I was lucky enough to get to play for Bobby Bowden and see how he run his operation. I was a GA for Frank Signetti. We learned, he, I learned detail from him, very detailed. Then I was lucky enough to co coach for the ultimate Hall of Fame coach, Don Nealon. And I, I want to thank him for believing in me and giving me the opportunity at such a young age to do the things I got to do. 
I never wanted to let him down because he was a great coach and he treated us so well. And we did things that I, in, in my whole life I never thought we would be able to do. It was really a mar remarkable success story of how he transformed West Virginia into a named school. He put us on the map and there was no question about it. Very proud of our two undefeated seasons. And let me tell you right here and now, Major Harris doesn't get hurt on the third play of the game. We run Notre Dame's butt right off the field. Yes or no? Yes. The other major reason uh, I got into coaching, is my mentor and the guy that means more to me, anybody in coaching is a young guy named Donnie Young, which is now 75 years old. He's from Clinton in West Virginia. He's a Hall of Famer too. He, he recruited me and nobody really wanted me. He coached me, but nobody thought I could play. I was 17 linebacker to start a spring ball my freshman year, and all I did was made me mad, and I stayed mad for four years, okay? Then, uh, and then I got to coach with him. Now, that just don't happen very much. So anything, that ever, all the success I've had and everything I've done, I totally owe it to Donnie Young. Uh, <clears throat> another major reason is the ability to coach Neil and Steph. That, the, the West Virginia... Neyland era was, is a golden era and it probably maybe will never be repeated again. I hope it does. I hope Neil, Neil does great things here. I'm really high on him. I hope he does well. But that, that period was so special for us and so special for all the Mountaineer fans. I think one of the major reasons is the stability of the staff. I call them the big five. These were guys that are here for 18 years or more on this staff that made us always competitive. We never lost anything in recruiting. We had continuity on both sides of the ball where we didn't have the communication problems and that sort of thing. So the number one guy here, the first I want to talk about is Bill Kerlavich, defensive line, one of the best defensive line coaches I've ever seen. He coached here for 30 years, 30 years. Recruiting coordinator and Donnie Young, 40 years, 40, one of the best evaluators of talent I've ever seen. John Holiday, the recruiting machine, 20 years. Dave McMichael, right here, my best friend. Stand up, Dave. Great coach. Great coach. He was here for 18 years. Coach, I can't tell you how many players he recruited from great players from Western Pennsylvania. It was unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. More All Americans, all of us put together, he coached. In closing, thank goodness, in closing, I've always been proud to wear the golden blue, even though we wear black sometimes. Always proud to be from West Virginia and play at WVU and coach at WVU. Never really wanted to be anywhere else. As people always say, once a mountaineer, always a mountaineer. Thank you. Congratulations to you, Steve. Our next two inductees are about to do something that's never been done before within the WVU Hall of Fame, and that is to be enshrined in the very same year. Both come from the sport of wrestling, and together they represent two of the greatest wrestlers in the history of West Virginia University. It's time to meet the Jones brothers, and we begin with Virtus. Virtus Jones became the Mountaineers' first three-time wrestling All-American and first four-time Eastern Wrestling League champion during his outstanding career from 1997 to 2000. A two-time NCAA runner-up, Jones posted a stellar 30-2 and two record as a senior in 2000 at 184 pounds, setting the all-time West Virginia consecutive wins mark at 24. He earned his final All-America honor with a second place finish at the 2000 NCAA Championships in St. Louis. He was named the EWL Co-Wrestler of the Year in 2000, as well as the EWL Tournament's Outstanding Wrestler. Jones is currently tied for 10th on the WVU all-time list for victories as a senior at 30. He won the EWL title at 184 pounds. Jones finished his WVU career with 95 victories, which was sixth best at the time at WVU. He currently ranks fourth on the WVU all-time list for victories in a single season, 
in the 177, 184 pound weight class with 31. Jones is second on WBU's all-time list for NCAA tournament victories with 14. He was twice named as a recipient of the George Needoff Outstanding Wrestler Award. Jones graduated from WVU with a bachelor's degree in health and physical education teaching in 2001. Please join us in a round of applause for 2019 inductee, Virtus Jones. Virtus, welcome to the West Virginia University Sports Hall of Fame. Thank you, Tony, for that nice introduction. Um, Mr. Lyons, thank you for continuing to help West Virginia Athletics build the culture and climb higher. So we truly really appreciate that. Uh, to all our alum up here as well, sitting here with me, congratulations on the hall. Great accomplishment. To be honest, I've been downplaying this, trying to keep it you know, on the down low, but this is really a big deal and uh, very special to be here. Um, so at this time, I'd like to thank say thank you to the WVU Hall of Fame Committee for allowing me the opportunity to be inducted into the hall. I'm truly honored. It is with great appreciation and humility to be one of, be one of 197 members of the WVU Sports Hall of Fame, and even better yet, I get to share this stage with my little brother. You know, there was a time when I was Greg Jones's older, bigger brother. I go to wrestling events, I'm doing wrestling camps, and they'll say, hey, are you, are you Virtus? Oh, you're Greg Jones's brother. So how things, time, uh, times have changed, and, um, but I am glad you guys had Greg continue to follow me up here for this, this uh, recognition. An old African proverb reads, it takes a village to raise a child. This journey of mine has truly been about the village. I am so blessed and so thankful for the village that has raised me. Now for the village. I'm the oldest of five children, growing up in an old country coal town of Slickville, Pennsylvania. My mother was always loving and caring, was always there for us no matter what. She always had the right words at the right time to make us feel better. She always found a way to come up and make us feel special. She sacrificed so much of her life to take care of me and my brothers and sisters. She is truly a special mother and a person. My dad, he always had the vision for wrestling to be an opportunity for us to get a college education and to have a better life than what he had. He had this experimental idea at the age of six he was going to coach me in wrestling, which ultimately turned into the beginning of the infamous Jones Wrestling Club. The journey and the details of that Jones Wrestling Club, let me tell you, are for a different time and a different place. We're not going to discuss those details here. He had a lot of different ways of coaching, he had a lot of different philosophies. But one thing he held true was we were going to outwork everyone and we were going to master the fundamentals. The, the motto was, no one outworked us, period. And then there was my grandfather, late Clyde Jones, also known in the village as Papa. He was a powerful human being. He was the foundation of everything my brothers and sisters represent and work for. He was the glue of the entire Jones family. I know he's up there smiling down on us proud. My brothers and sisters, all of my aunts and uncles, my cousins, my coaches, my in-laws, who traveled from Slickville, Greensburg, Newcastle, to Morgantown, and all around the country supporting me, there were a lot of roadblocks, there were a lot of detours in the journey. But because of that village, I was able to succeed. The sacrifices that village has all made, I am greatly appreciated and thankful for. My teammates, Thank you for sharing your experiences and wisdom with me. Mason, I know you're out there. Without you, I wouldn't have made it in that ambulance ride from the shell building when my whole entire body was cramping up from trying to cut too much weight that day. So Mason, I truly appreciate it. Not only were you a great captain, but you were a great captain for the entire state, the entire university. Sam Klein. No one wanted to drill with you in the room, buddy, but you were my partner. And I'm so thankful and appreciate, appreciative that you were my partner. We got it done, buddy. Vince Pellis, he's not here today. He couldn't make it. Vinny Vegas, he is truly my brother from another mother. The lightning and the thunder. 
you were always there no matter what. Words can't express how thankful I am for us to have each other throughout our journey. Coach Turnbull, if you're out there, can you stand up? I can't see you. You always believed in me, no matter the situation, and you always had my back. The more adversity I suffered, the more you cared, the more you coached, the more you mentored. You taught me that there is more to wrestling, sorry, more to life than wrestling. You taught me that success is found within the journey you live, not within the wins and the losses. What I miss most about, the w, about WVU is my teammates and the daily life coaching that I received from Coach Turnbull and Coach Carr. Now as a health and physical education teacher and a coach myself, I have a responsibility to be able to not only to teach and coach sports, but I need to be able to teach those life lessons. I hope I'm able to shape and mold my student athletes the way you shaped and molded me, Coach. Because of you and Coach Carr's belief in me and recruiting me to WVU, you guys made it possible for me to be a Mountaineer. To the WVU Athletic Department, the WVU Physical Education Teaching Department, all of its fine leaders, educators, and coaches, I am honored to be a proud representative of West Virginia University. I'd like to say, Whew. I'd like to say thank you to my wife, uh, Rachel, my kids, Jayla and Jaden. For always loving me no matter my shortcomings, and most importantly, for challenging me every day to be a better father, a better husband, and a better person. If anyone in here really knew me, they would know that the success I've had over the last 24 years has a lot to do with my wife by my side. So thank you. Lastly, I believe we are all truly the sum total of all of our surroundings and everything happens for a reason. I am the sum total of all of you who were and still are a part of my village that continues to raise me. Thank you to all of you. None of this would be possible without you. Thank you and congratulations, Virtist. Our next inductee needs almost no introduction. He not only became a household name here in the state of West Virginia, he is considered one of the greatest in the history of collegiate sports. Let's meet Greg Jones. Greg Jones is WBU's all-time leader in wins and is the Mountaineers' only three-time NCAA champion during his wrestling career from 2001 to 2005. Posting a career record of 126 and four, Jones won the NCAA championship as a freshman in 2002 at 174 pounds, as a junior in 2004 at 184 pounds, and as a senior in 2005 at 184 pounds. With three NCAA individual championships, Jones became the 39th wrestler in NCAA history to win three national championships, the 20th wrestler to win titles at two different weight classes, and the 10th wrestler to win a national title as a freshman. Jones is the only West Virginia wrestler to post an undefeated season, doing it in 2004 with a record of 26 and 0, and once again in 2005, posting a mark of 25 and 0. He ended his career on a 51-match win streak. Following his collegiate wrestling career, Jones served as an assistant coach and associate head coach at WVU for nine seasons. Since 2014, Jones has been one of the top wrestling coaches in MMA training. Jones, who now lives in Boca Raton, Florida, graduated from WVU in 2005 with a bachelor's degree in sports and exercise psychology. He and his brother, Virtus, become the second set of siblings to be inducted into the WBU Sports Hall of Fame. Please join us in a round of applause for 2019 inductee, Greg Jones.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Hall of Fame, Greg Jones. Thank you, Tony, and uh, thank you, Virtus, for uh, continuing to set the bar high. Uh, it's going to be tough to follow, but I'll be quick, and I don't know if I'll match it, but I'll try. Uh, thank you to the committee. Thank you to uh, Director Lyons, and congratulations to all of my fellow inductees. It's um, with, with great honor and privilege and very grateful to be uh, up here amongst you guys and to be here with uh, my fellow Mountaineers. Uh, I actually remember in 1995, <clears throat> excuse me, when Coach Craig Turnbull uh, sat at our dining room table in Slickville, Pennsylvania, recruiting my older brother. Uh, I remember that talk clear to this day, and he talked about uh, coming to West Virginia University and coming out the other side a better person, a better athlete, <clears throat> and a better student. That he prided himself in his program of taking a holistic approach and to developing his, his young men uh, into complete people. Um, you know, I have a, a lot of fond memories of Morgantown of my career, uh, looking back. Um, a lot of success, a lot of uh, downfalls, but one, one thing that, uh, that sticks out to me that, um, as you heard, I was fortunate enough to win three NCAA championships. Um, the fourth year was my sophomore year. Uh, went two and two. I didn't place in the tournament, but um, also what I remember clear to this day, I remember walking off the mat, um, walking to the back tunnel and just sitting in the back corner kind of in a puddle crying, you know, at that time it's the most important thing to you in your life and you think the world's going to end. Um, so after a few minutes, Coach Turnbull uh, came back to the tunnel and, you know, gave me, gave me his Turnbull talk, come back and take third and, well, you know, uh, but one thing I, I kind of dried up to tears and tried to put myself back together and I stood up to go back into the arena and he looked at me and he goes, hey, I love you. And that resonated with me very powerfully and very much still to this day that um, I have a lot of appreciation for Coach Turnbull, what he's meant for my family, our family, um, and what he's meant to West Virginia University, the wrestling program in the state of West Virginia. And that's, that's how I reflect back fondly of my experience uh, as a Mountaineer. Uh, to the countless, you know, like as is often the case, I don't, I'm not standing up here alone. There's countless people, countless individuals behind me and with me that have allowed me to arrive at this, uh, this point uh, in my life. You know, from all the, uh, the coaches, the teammates, the staff members, uh, the fellow coaches and administrators that I worked with uh, during my time as a coach here, uh, I want to thank all you guys as well. Um, and again, as Virtus said, I was going to stand up here and just say what he said, but I don't know if I can get away with that, but um, to my uh, mother and father, Virtus and Emily Jones, uh, you know, I owe you the biggest thank you and the biggest hug uh, for instilling us the hard work and the, and the values that allow us to um, carry us through, through our lives. Uh, one thing that I take a lot of pride in, um, you know, as Virtus said, we didn't, we didn't have much, we didn't have a lot of money, but we, what we didn't have, we made, for, for, we made up for it in hard work and dedication instilled in us by our, by our parents and uh, by, our, by our grandfather. So um, it was always, I used to always wonder, you know, we go back to school and people talk about where'd you go on summer vacation, what you do this summer, da -da, and um, people were talking about going to the beach for, for vacation. And as you get older, you get a different, little bit different perspective on things. And I used to wonder, you know, we never went on a family vacation ever as a kid. But then you get older, you realize the amount of, amount of sacrifice, the amount of work, the amount of energy uh, in time it takes driving us from, from tournament to tournament, state to state. Um, you know, and as I get older, I realize those were, that was our family vacations. That's what brought our family together. That's what made us closer. And that was uh, the core and the foundation of our family bond. So thank you, mom and dad. And I um, also want to thank my wife, uh, Kelly. You know, there was an old joke in Morgantown that Rita Rodriguez was the ultimate coach's wife. Um, and I joke with, with Kelly that uh, you're, the, you're the ultimate coach's wife. <laughs> so thank you. And I, I want to mention my daughter, Mara. And uh, I got to mention 
Grayson Jones is my son. He said he's going to come up here and be the cool guy or the famous guy. So there you are, buddy. So, but anyway, thank you um, again to the staff. Thank you, Director Lyons. Um, and it's uh, we're very, very grateful to, to be here with you guys. Thank you. Congratulations to you, Greg. From two brothers, we transition to another amazing accomplishment of athletic success. Need I say more than the Bulger family? Brother Mark became the first for his amazing career both here at West Virginia and then in the National Football League. Sister Kate was enshrined here last year, and today Meg Bulger becomes just the seventh member of the West Virginia University women's basketball program, and amazingly, the third member of the Bulger family to come into the hall. Please direct your attention to the boards. Meet Meg Bulger. Meg Bulger completed her WVU women's basketball career in 2008 as a four-year letter winner, team captain, All-America honorable mention, and All-Big East honoree. The Pittsburgh native was regarded as one of the premier players at WVU and within the Big East Conference during her time as a Mountaineer. After starting her career as the Big East Rookie of the Year, Bulger went on to become a two-time All-America Honorable Mention, a WBCA All-Region Honoree, and a four-time All-Big East Honoree. Bulger departed Morgantown ranked fifth all-time in career scoring 1,665 points, second in three-point field goals made with 265, and fifth with 29 20-point games. She capped her career as the program's all-time leader in three-point field goal percentage and free throw percentage, and was tied for the all-time lead with six 30-point outings. She has served as an analyst, sideline reporter for AT&T Sportsnet Pittsburgh and as an analyst for the Mountaineer Sports Network's women's basketball broadcasts. Bulger joins her brother Mark and her sister Kate in the WVU Sports Hall of Fame. Please join us in a round of applause for 2019 inductee Meg Bulger. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the WVU Sports Hall of Fame, Meg Bulger. Okay. Coach Carey, I did not shoot enough. I can tell by that video I should have taken some more shots. Uh, I just first want to thank Tony Creedy for the wonderful inductions. Uh, thank you to President Gee, Shane Lyons, Kathy Martin, Terry Howes, just to name a few, but everyone that has worked so hard in making this day possible. I am humbled and honored to be a part of this incredibly accomplished class, and I want to extend my congratulations to you all and to your families. Since coming down to watch Mark in 1996, my family and I have had the blessing to not only meet the best coaches, trainers, and administrators from Coach Nealon, Ed Passalong, Coach Huggins, but the people of this great state. You have embraced my family from the very beginning. And I hope that everyone who is a part of my growth as a student athlete and a person over the years knows that I have not taken any relationship for granted. And I could never express how much I value each relationship with you all. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I've had the blessings and opportunities to come back and work with so many TV and radio. And I am so grateful for that opportunity. AT&T Sports, West Virginia Illustrated, IMG, you guys are so much more professional than me, but I am grateful for every opportunity that I am able to cover West Virginia with the best crews in the country. I want to thank all of my former teammates. Lisa Costello, if you're out there, we came in together and you're the best. Despite the fact that I witnessed Coach Carey's, shall we say, colorful coaching style when he arrived my sister's sophomore year, I knew that there wasn't another coach that I would want to play for, and Katie and him pretty much told me that I wasn't. But I do know that there is no other coach that kind of came into this program and elevated it where it is today. We have way too many great stories to tell, but I am grateful enough to still have such a close relationship with you. 
even after you accuse me of shaving points my freshman year after a few turnovers at St. John's. <laughs> to everyone from my party bus, I know it was a rough morning, uh, but you guys are all such a special part of my family, and I love you all. Luckily, if there's still some coolers left, I'll have the opportunity to thank you all individually. And Mr. Gallagher, thank you for taking me so I stayed out of trouble. Being the youngest of five children, I learned at a young age to be tough and scrappy. But I was also loved and protected by my four best friends. My brothers Jimmy, Mark, and Patrick, and my sister Katie, I got to sit back and learn from you guys. Some good, some bad, and some things that we will never talk about. <laughs> but I adore you all more than anything. And having you and my darling nieces and my nephew Connie here means the world to me. Katie, you dedicated more than half of your life to telling me what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. <laughs> There were moments we were younger I couldn't spend enough time with you. And moments in college I couldn't get away from you quick enough. But through every moment, you were and are the role model that I needed in my life. And I love you more than anything. Gosh, this is embarrassing. <laughs> and just because you're down there this year and I'm up here, I would like to let Mountaineer Nation know that her and her husband Zach are pregnant with their second child. <laughs> I'm going to really hear about that one. <laughs> to my husband, Jim, and my baby girl, Noli, the joy you fill my heart with is not comparable to anything on this earth. And you guys are going to watch this induction video once a year forever. I love you, Noli. As the last Bolger, maybe for now, grandkids, never know, to stand and accept this honor, I want to take the time to toast to my parents, Pat and Jim. Yeah, that's fine. You both have supported all five of us every step of our lives. You went above and beyond your means to provide us the experiences in life that would teach us the values necessary to be good people. We could and can always rely on you both to give us the support we need, even when it's a kick in the butt. You two were the constant that kept us on the right track and focused on the things to be the people we are today, and I hope that we all made you proud. Pretty sure you're both honorary inductees now. I just want to say thank you to West Virginia. It means the world to my entire family, and let's go Mountaineers. Congratulations, Meg. Our next inductee is the second in our class coming from men's basketball. Daryl Prue's performance and accomplishments were the catalyst behind the Mountaineers' success in the late 1980s, culminating with 26 wins in his senior season. Direct your attention, please, to the video boards as we meet Daryl Prue. Daryl Prue was one of the top forwards in the Atlantic 10 Conference, earning Atlantic 10 first team honors in 1989. During his career, the Mountaineers posted an 89 and 38 record with three NCAA tournament appearances and one NIT appearance. The Washington DC native scored 1,426 points during his career, which currently ranks 20th all time. Prue still ranked second in career field goal percentage and 11th in career rebounds. In 1989, Prue was the Atlantic 10 field goal percentage leader at 63.3% while leading the Mountaineers to an A-10 regular season championship. The Mountaineers had the nation's longest winning streak that season at 22 games. As a freshman, Prue was named the A-10 Freshman of the Year and to the A-10 All-Freshman Team. He was twice named Atlantic 10 Freshman of the Week. In 1987, as a sophomore, Prue earned three Atlantic 10 Player of the Week honors and was named to the Atlantic 10 All-Conference Second Team at the end of the season. 
He was named to the A-10 second team in 1988 and was twice named Atlantic 10 Player of the Week as a senior before earning A-10 first team honors. Prue is a member of the 1986 through 95 WVU all-time basketball team. Prue received a bachelor's degree in physical education from WVU. Please join us in a round of applause for 2019 inductee, Daryl Prue. Daryl Prue, welcome to the WVU Sports Hall of Fame. Well, one thing y'all didn't do is, uh, what I, which I kind of miss, when I scored or I get announced. Can someone do it? Prue. <laughs> Yeah, I thought they was born in first my freshman year. I didn't know they were saying prove. Um, congratulations to everyone on stage, and thank you to everybody on the, the committee on the committee that helped me uh, achieve this wonderful award. Um, I have a few stories for people who are here and no longer here. Uh, I want to thank my old high school coach Jodine Davison and Johnny Walker, <laughs> my grandfather. James Wallace, <laughs> Coach Gary McPherson. In my junior year in high school, we were ranked, my high school was ranked number one in the country. And Gary McPherson was at maybe 10 to 14 games that year. And I was figuring out why is this guy here? He was recruiting another uh, man on a young man on our team named Sean Alvarado. <laughs> but he was such a nice man, we would always talk. And I was kind of naive about the recruiting stuff then. And then my senior year, him and Coach Kelly came in and had this spiel about coming to West Virginia. Um, but I was pressured to go somewhere else, which I didn't end up going. And I ended up in the summertime getting released from my commitment and uh, to take my visit here. And they wanted me to put me on one of these little private prop planes, which I was not going to fly on. If I had to come here on one of those planes, Coach Cali, you would have not got me here. Um, so they sent Coach Ford to come and get me. Coach Ford drove to D.C. because he loved D.C. He's from D.C. He came down and uh, picked me up, drove me through all the mountains, and we got here and I never took another visit. I never took another visit. Um, UNLV was coming in hard after me. At the time, they were hot, and it was getting guys that was getting put off teams and transferring. And my grandfather was like, well, it's too far for me to come see you play. And, and that during, also during that process, Coach Catlett wasn't recruiting me. He was recruiting my grandparents. Uh, he was, I would go to my grandparents' house, and he's there talking to them instead of talking to me. Well, I think I was the one that had to sign the paper and play here. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, I have to thank my teammates. You know, Herbie Brooks is here, uh, Chris Brooks, Steve Berger. Uh, that whole senior year was great, uh, you know, to be remembered 30 years later. I still get messages on my, on my Facebook page talking about uh, Duke cheated y'all in the NCAA tournament in 1989. Uh, it, was, it was a bad call. It was a bad call. Uh, and uh, it just my grandmother wasn't making, couldn't make it today, but she's, I'm sure she's watching. She's at home sick. Uh, Coach Ford couldn't make it. Uh, and, and, you know, I just wanted to thank everybody that's here, all my family, my sisters, my cousin, uh, Linnell, and her daughter, Chloe, uh, for, for coming here and supporting. And my cousin, Brian, who's been there through everything. Um, again, uh, Coach Cal, I got mad at you one time in my whole career here, and I got mad at you for putting me at center my junior year. I wanted to say something, but I waited 30 years. Now, now I'll tell you, <laughs> I didn't like that, Coach. You know, Coach still thinks he's in charge of me. He, he tells me to take off my jacket, sit over here, let's go over there. I told him it's my day, so I'm going to do what I want to do today. <laughs> you know, Coach Cal has been like a father figure to me. Um, one story that sticks out. My grandfather, about 14, 15 years ago, got really sick. And Coach Kelly was in D.C. to come meet, meet up with me for a dinner or something. I told him uh, my, my grandfather was sick and not doing well. 
He said, what's the address? Sent him the address. Again, he's there before me. So he was there, and I walked in the house, and this picture would never leave my, never leave my brain. They were hugging each other with my grandfather's chest, I mean, head on his chest. And that, that right there just took a, you know, the meaning of everything of what coaching is supposed to be. You know, 30 years later, they still send Christmas cards, birthday cards to my grandmother. I get a Christmas card too and a birthday card and they write in it. I know it's a niece. I know it's not you, coach. I know, it's, I know it's the lovely wife is writing in it, and I think that's a special, and that's what I try to convey to my students to, uh, at, at this day, day and time. And uh, I just wanted to thank everybody for being here, supporting. My T.C. William coaching staff is back there. Yeah. And, I, and uh, I don't know if it's Coach Hugs. I saw him earlier. So Coach Hugs called me when I got the job at T.C. Williams and muscled me to hire Tyrone Sally. He's hopefully a future Hall of Famer. So this Tyrone Sally played here a few years ago. So um, it's all family, WVU family. So thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you all for having me up here. Let's go, Mountaineers. Congratulations to you, Daryl. And I totally agree, that was a charge. Horrible call. Duke gets all the calls and Danny Ferry gets all the calls. Our final inductee was a standout performer for the Mountaineer football team who came to West Virginia thinking that he was going to be a tight end. After he was chased out of the tight end meeting room by defensive line coach Bill Kerlavich, he went on to enjoy great success as a defensive lineman. Please welcome John Thornton, direct your attention to our boards. One of the strongest defensive tackles in school history, John Thornton was a four-year starter with 41 consecutive starts from 1995 to 1998. A two-time All-Big East selection from Philadelphia, Thornton finished with 45 tackles in 1998, including a season-high 10 tackles against Maryland. He led the team with eight quarterback pressures and posted seven tackles for loss with four sacks. Thornton played in three bowl games at WVU, the 1997 Gator Bowl, the 1997 Carquest Bowl, and the 1998 Insight.com Bowl. He was a member of WVU's top-ranked defense in the country in 1996 that led the nation in total defense at 223.4 yards per game number two in rushing defense and turnover margin, number four in scoring defense, and number five in pass efficiency defense. Thornton was drafted in 1999 by the Tennessee Titans as the 52nd pick overall in the second round and had a 10-year career in the NFL. Thornton studied sport management at West Virginia. He is currently an NFL agent for Rock Nation Sports. Please join us in a round of applause for 2019 inductee, John Thornton. Please welcome to the Hall of Fame, John Thornton. Uh, thank you everybody for having me here today. Um, I'm a little underdressed, but I'm ready to get to the game. And I know everybody else in here is. Uh, they should have open bar for keeping us here this long. But um, just want to thank the school, thank West Virginia for offering me a scholarship. Uh, I think that's, that's really an honor to, to be able to, to go to school, have someone else pay for it. I know that now my son is here, so I uh, appreciate you again for having my son here on scholarship. Um, thank you to Coach Nealon. He's a class individual. Uh, he's a legend as a coach, and he pretty much uh, he built this place. Uh, I personally think he, he built this place that we're in. Uh, he helped build it, but uh, he, he was the type of guy that uh, was a great mentor to all of his players. Um, thank you to Coach Dunlap, who was my coordinator here. Uh, every year I was here. Coach Calaverich, my defensive line coach. Um, he was a guy that I talked to every single day. I would, rare, rare times I skipped class. I would come to the facility. I wouldn't stay at home in bed. I would just come here 
and you know, Kerr Lab would be out there smoking a cigar. And uh, you know, he was obligated to ask me if I skipped class, and I was obligated to lie to him and say, no, I'm not. And then we would just have a conversation about life every day before practice. And I really uh, appreciate that. He would talk to me about family, about the stock market, about what I should and shouldn't do. And we rarely talked about football. But those type of relationships here, I really appreciate it. Appreciate all my teammates. Um, you know, I never thought I would be standing up here, so I appreciate uh, you know all of my teammates, you know, my mom and my dad. Uh, I want to thank you know my family and friends that are here today. My my two boys that are here, Rory and Ty. Can y'all stand up, please? These are my two youngest boys. Um, you know, Jalen is getting ready. I think you know Jalen's getting redshirted, but he's he's suiting up today. Um, you know, just try to do everything I can for these guys. Uh, just try to be a positive role model, uh, you know, for my three boys. Um, want to thank everyone that's here today. Want to thank Lauren. Want to thank Katie, my nanny, for since 2005. Uh, Charles Fisher is my best friend since I got here. We're roommates, we work together. Uh, Jess, Tyler, Ethan, uh, Ron and Barb are here. Ron Snell. Barbara Snell from New Martinsville, West Virginia. You guys stand up. He's the biggest Mountaineer fan, Ron uh, and Barb. Um, as someone who's not here is my, my ex-wife, Allison. That's their daughter. You know, we started dating here. We were married for 18 years. We're great friends now. Uh, she told me not to mention her. She was mad at me the other day. She said, do not mention me in your speech. And so I'm mentioning her. Uh, her parents are here. But, uh, you know, they've been a big part of my career here in West Virginia and in the pros. So. I uh, de definitely wanted to thank them. Um, any of my other teammates in the crowd, thank you. And, and thank the fans here. But I, I'm really excited about where this program is going. I'm excited about being in the Big 12. It's a lot of extra money. Uh, so hopefully next time they will have an open bar so we can have a little more fun. But uh, thank you, everybody here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks and congratulations to you, John. It truly is a great day to be a Mountaineer. Today we've come together to honor and pay tribute to some of the greatest names to ever represent West Virginia University. They arrived here on our campus with dreams and aspirations, and they left with accomplishments that rank among the greatest feats in Mountaineer history. Today they officially joined the 28 other classes that have come before them. And as you've heard, this class is a wonderful collection and combination of personalities and stories that embody the culture of WVU athletics. Some came simply on a promise that they would be given a chance, a chance, and that is all. And each of them took that chance and in true Mountaineer spirit exceeded everyone's expectations except perhaps their own. And for that we are all here to be grateful. Their memories and their accomplishments will live forever now in our minds and their accomplishments will join the others that have come before them as members of this most elite group. It is truly the highest honor for every WVU athlete or coach. It is the pinnacle of being a Mountaineer. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me now as we thank and formally induct the West Virginia University Hall of Fame class of 2019.